All right, guys, I believe we're up and running. It's Tell Me We Are Live on Facebook. So welcome back, guys, to uh, the first episode in a long time of the Property Sourcing Show. It has been a while since um, I've last gone live into the community here at Property Sourcing Made Simple with a mini training. But we are back with the bank tonight and we're ready to kick start the weekly episodes of the Property Sourcing Show moving forward every Thursday night here inside the community, live streamed at 7.30. So without further ado, guys, let's just get straight into it. And um, tonight's episode, I'm going to talk about raising investment via private investors, which is essentially the holy grail of growing a property business, whether that's a property sourcing business, whether that's a deal packaging business, whether that's a property portfolio business. It, it, the holy grail is raising investment. Deal package business needs investors. Want to scale your portfolio for wealth and time and freedom? You're going to need private investors to do so because your own pot will eventually run dry and commercial, sorry, traditional lending is becoming more and more difficult to actually be able to get. Now, before we jump into the training, guys, if you want a copy of the PDF worksheet that goes along with tonight's training, just put cash in the comments below the live video. And I make sure that we get to the PDF worksheet that goes along with it. Now, if you're watching this back on YouTube, which will be tomorrow, but if you're watching it back on YouTube, there will be a link directly below this video where you can click, click and grab the worksheet. So that's the formalities out of the way. Now, let's dive in. If you have been following me for a while, guys, if you have come to the previous or seen the previous episodes of the Property Sourcing Show, you will know that I don't do long, boring, mundane, really long trainings the property sourcing show the mini trainings that i'm going to do every single week from this week on and every other property sourcing show that we've ever done are designed to be super short i'm talking 15 20 minutes max um but the information that you get is designed to be short 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 sharp sweet but super implement implementable is that a word it is now the whole premise of what I'm trying to say is the bite-sized information that I give you here tonight and every other property source and show moving forward is bite-sized enough for you to be able to grab, take hold of, run with and implement in your property business. Okay, so dive in. When it comes, guys, to raising finance, to build, to grow, to scale your property business, either as a data sourcer, either as an investor, most people want to seek out the golden goose of private investor finance. Most property entrepreneurs want to be able to have the capabilities to call upon funds to facilitate their deals at the click of a finger. Now, here's the thing. Most want to be able to do that, but very few are actively out there doing it and doing it well. That's the difference. There are lots of people out there trying to raise finance. There are lots of people out there trying to find investors for an aspect of the property business, but there are actually very few doing it and doing it well with tangible results now here's the thing if you haven't mastered the ability to be able to raise unlimited investor funds and i'm putting an emphasis on unlimited okay because being able to raise a little bit here and there is not going to build you the property business that you want being able to raise a little bit here and there is not going to build you an empire now don't get me wrong. There are some of you listening to the property source and show here tonight. There are some of you who are in our free Facebook community who don't want to build the empire. If that's you, if you don't want to build an empire, fine. Tune in, enjoy what I have to say, but it doesn't need to be the holy grail for you. If on the other hand, you are like me and you want to build an absolute legacy empire of property for wealth, for more money, for more time, for more freedom, for more choice in your life, Tune in because this is going to be super useful. Now, here's the thing. If you haven't managed to, to master the ability to be able to raise unlimited, I'm saying it again, unlimited investor funds for your property business, guys, there's going to be three main frustrations that you're going to face. The first one is going to be you're going to feel completely stifled by your lack of progress. Okay. It's kind of like you haven't even got off the starting blocks. Or if you have got off the starting blocks, you've got three quarters of the way around the track. You've started to slow down. You've got absolutely nothing left in the tank and you don't know how you're going to make it to the finish line. That's the first frustration that you're going to encounter if you don't master these skills. The second thing that you're going to feel exceptionally frustrated about is your lack of financial resource in the here and now to grow. Okay, so again, bringing it back to my original point, 
if you dipped your toes in the water of property, whether that is in property sourcing, whether that is in property investing, whether that's in rent to rent, whether that's in HMO, SA, the reality is that most people, 99.9% .9 of people turn to property because they know it is one of the number one asset classes in the world that can build them wealth. That's, that's a fact. That's why we're here. That's why we're listening to this. So if you're not mastering how to raise private finance to be able to scale to those levels, you're going to be strangled by your lack of financial resources to do so. And the third thing that, and this is the real kicker, sorry to say, this is the real kicker. The third thing you're going to be super frustrated by is actually having to let deals go. Good deals because you don't have the resources to fund them or the investors to buy them if you are running a property sourcing business. That, my friends, is going to kick you square in the jaw. That one's going to hurt. I have been there. I have wore the t-shirt. I have had to let perfectly, perfectly good deals go. Some of the best deals that I had seen up until the point that I was able to raise finance, I had to let them go because I didn't know how to master the skill of raising unlimited funds. That's not what I want for you. What I want for you guys is the kind of property business um, that's not a slow death. That's not going to be pretty, okay? As a property investor, as an ambitious property investor, as an ambitious property entrepreneur, as an ambitious, hungry, driven property sourcer, if that's what you're doing, there are three things that I want for you instead. So screw the frustrations. There are three things that I want for you instead. First of all, I want you to be able to visibly see tangible results month on month, not progress. Month on month in your business that you can look at, that you can manage, that you can measure, that you can ch check. You want to be able to see that progress month on month. If you're not seeing progress in the business, it leaves you feeling frustrated. It leaves you feeling downcast. It leaves you feeling overwhelmed. It leaves you feeling completely and utterly, frankly, fucked off because the efforts that you're putting in are not being remunerated on the other side. Okay, so I want you to be able to see progress month on month within your property business, whether that's um, the number of properties that you're adding to your portfolio, whether that's the number of deals that you're sourcing per month, whether that's the amount of revenue that you are bringing in per month, there needs to be progress month on month. The second thing, guys, that I really want for you within your property business is to be able to confidently raise finance, to be able to confidently find investors with ease, to have investors that seek you out and not the other way around. I don't want you to have to chase. It's really unsexy. It's a massive turnoff, right? So you want the investors to seek you rather than you seeking them. And the third thing that you want to have in your property business is to have the ability, guys, to move on deals, to act on deals and opportunities which present themselves to you because you know that you can call upon the money to fund them as and when needed. Okay, sounds really simple. How do we do those things, Danielle? Well, it is really simple, but it's not easy. And this is where we really effectively separate the talkers from the doers, okay? Now, I'm gonna break it down into six super short, super actionable activities, guys, that you need to do in order to be able to find investors and raise funds with ease. Number one, get pitch perfect. Who you are, what you do, and how you can help. Make your initial introductions friendly, even witty, if you have a personality. If you're not very witty, don't try and be witty. Get comfortable to talk about talking about you, about your business, about what you bring to the table. But most importantly, and this is where so many people fail to actually act, talk about how you can be of service to your potential investor instead of asking what they can do for you really fucking turn off stop doing it stop expecting everything handed to you on a silver platter and instead get out there roll your sleeves up and tell people how you can be of service to them instead of thinking how they can help you the second thing that you need to do to be able to confidently raise infinite investor funds is try before you buy i'm serious so once you start gaining some traction guys with your marketing and your networking you will draw some interest if you've done it right now, the problem is that not all interest is genuine interest and you will encounter time wasters. You will encounter soul suckers. You will encounter freebie seekers, right? That's going to happen. 
these parasites won't help you grow your property business. And the fact is, guys, if you don't have the right, now listen, if you don't have the right pre-qualification process in place in your business, you will waste a lot of time dealing with the wrong kind of people. Now, most people, as they're building and scaling their property businesses, are not time rich. That's what your aspiration is. But right now, let's say you're in the first 12 months of your property journey, the likelihood is you don't actually have the luxury of a lot of time. Don't fucking waste it talking to people, potential investor clients that actually have no, no inclination to become an investor. Okay, so inside our mentorship program, guys, I teach all our guys how to triage an investor before agreeing to go any further with them. Okay, so when you say triage, what does that mean, Danielle? I've spoken about this before. If you go to a and &E, you will always see the triage nurse. So she will take you into a room. She is assess the symptoms that you're giving her. She'll ask you a couple of very quick questions that she can tick the boxes to before she decides who you get to see. Do you need to see the doctor or can she fix you here and there? We do the exact same with our investors. So my advice to you guys is to get a system in place to pre-qualify potential investor clients before you commit to going to second base. Speaking of second base, the third thing that you need to do to be able to raise finance in your property business, guys, is the first date. Now, that first meeting is absolutely critical. Not only, guys, do first impressions count, they do, but it's a golden opportunity, wait for it, for investors to do their due diligence on you, okay? And if they are a serious investor, which is essentially what we're seeking out, believe me, they will do their due diligence on you. So what I suggest that you do do is that you come to that first initial, whether that's a coffee date, whether that's a lunch date, whether that's a Zoom date, come to that particular meeting prepared with every single piece of due diligence that you would do on someone else to make it super easy for them. Okay. One of the key documents that I would absolutely have as a non-negotiable for this in first initial meeting is your investor prospectus. Don't confuse this with a, an investor pack. They're completely and utterly different. So if you don't have an investor prospectus in place, I suggest that you highly, highly place some priority on it effective immediately. Number four, the follow-up. This is my favorite. If you've been following me for a while, guys, you will know that I'm a massive fan of the follow-up process. Now, this is where you will be given the opportunity to really, really raise funds, to really secure that investor. Your, the communication, guys, between that first date and the signed, sealed and delivered stage is absolutely critical. So you're gonna get the opportunity to confirm what was spoken about at the initial meeting, to reiterate your investor's objectives, really important, never miss that part out. You'll get to reiterate their time scales. you'll get to repeat your intentions, You'll get to set some timeframes to move forward with. In super short, guys, the follow-up process is the single most important function of any property business. In my opinion, the follow-up is actually the most important part of any business second to its marketing. Okay, so make sure you have airtight, robust, preferably automated systems in place for your follow-up. Number five show me the money now i'm going to keep this fairly short and sweet before you start offering on properties guys i'm making big plans with your new investment capital that you've secured because you've done points one two three and four be sure to legally and compliantly ask for proof of funds say it again sounds really simple sounds really common sounds really basic sounds like most people would do that no they don't okay so be sure to legally and compliantly ask for funds. There can be nothing worse, guys, than thinking that you've been handed the keys to the castle, figuratively speaking, only to find out that the box that they were given to you in was empty. So take my advice. Save yourself from looking really, really foolish and ask for proof of their investment capital early in the process. If they said they've got 100K to invest, you want to see it. If they tell you they've got 200, you want to see it. If they tell you you've got 50, they're lying and they've got 100, but you still want to see it. Okay. And finally, guys, number six, signed, sealed, and delivered. Paperwork closes the deal always, baby. So 
once all the variables have been taken care of it's super important guys that everything is documented and i cannot stress this enough everything is documented and recorded legally to safeguard both parties if raising funds for your own portfolio you're going to want to have a private finance loan agreement in place okay should you be entering into a joint venture with your investor where you're both a part of the deal you're going to want to ensure that you've got a joint venture agreement in place and that you err on the right side of the fca financial conduct authority regulations if your investor is a new client for let's say your property sourcing business you're going to want to ensure that you've got a property source sourcing agreement in place alongside your business terms and conditions so let's recap guys this is what we want as ambitious property entrepreneurs we want to see progress in our business that we can tangibly touch month on month we want to see growth month on month the second thing that we want in our property business is the ability to confidently raise and find investors with ease we want investors to seek us out and not the other way around trust me it will make your journey much smoother the third thing that we want is to have the ability guys to move on deals and opportunities when they present themselves because you know that you can call upon the money at any given point in time to fund them okay to have these things guys to have those three what's in your business you have to get pitch perfect who you are what you do and importantly how you can help you need to try before you buy essentially install a weed out the wasters system into your your property business so that's a weed out the wasters system in your investor qualification process the third thing that you're going to want to do is wow at that first date show up with everything that that investor may want in terms of doing their due diligence on you if you don't have a, an investor prospectus make sure that you give that really important attention asap number four kickstart a kick-ass follow-up system preferably one that's automated preferably one that's systemized number five show me the money always ensure that you ask for proof of funds and number six make sure sign saved and delivered that your paperwork is on point i hope this has been super useful guys what i'm going to try and do is i'm going to try and share my screen of the of the workbook pdf yep there we go okay guys this is the workbook pdf that goes along with tonight's episode of the property source and show six steps to raise funds for your property business if you are watching this um back on replay just simply put cash in the comments below if you're watching it live tonight and you'd like a copy of that pdf just put cash in the comments below and i'll make sure we get it to you if you're watching this back on youtube which will be tomorrow the link to download the worksheet and the pdf will be underneath the video click it grab it grab a coffee read it i hope guys this has been super useful we are back with the buying every thursday night 7 30 pm inside the live facebook community a property source made simple the property source and show is back i hope this has been useful guys speak soon